Welcome to Backstage at the Enharmonic. I'm your host, Sean J. Kennedy. In today's episode, we talk to classically trained soprano and Broadway actress Rachel Zatkoff. I've had the pleasure of knowing Rachel for the better part of two decades. It was nice to have a chance to chat with her about her early influences in the music business and how she got the role, Christine, in Phantom of the Opera. Hi, Rachel. Are you there? Hi. How are you? I'm doing well, and I'm so happy that you uh, found a few minutes in your busy schedule to talk to me today and be on my podcast. Do you have a clear recollection when music first impacted you as a kid? Yes. Um, <clears throat> I remember when I was a very little girl, I, my, my dad was a pianist, is a pianist, and um, he would play all the time when I was little, and I used to listen to music in the car with him and everything, and that, I was probably four years old, and there was, there was um, Al Albert's Showcase. And on on television, which I watched all the time with these little girls dressed up and singing. And I, it's really funny. I, that's kind of when I knew I <laughs> really wanted to perform and sing. I even auditioned for the show. I didn't get on, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I know that you play piano, you sing. And way back when, I remember you even played flute. Um, I did. So... <laughs> Was your dad uh, your first instructor, uh, unofficially or officially? Like, where did your music instruction begin? He started teaching me piano when I was pretty young, actually. I I guess I was maybe, God, I want to say six or seven. He was already starting to kind of teach me piano. And um, I didn't really take it that seriously, to be honest, when I was that. (laughs) um, When I was 11, I. I told him I wanted to take voice lessons and we found um, a woman in Elkins Park named Susan Munzer and that I started taking voice lessons with her when I was 11 years old and I studied with her until I went to college. I studied with her until I was 17. Voice and then flute I picked up in uh, third grade, I guess it was. Wow. Yeah, third grade with uh, Matt Matakovic. <laughs> and I started nice. playing flute, and then I played that up until, I think, eighth grade. From middle school through high school, was there a moment uh, when you said, this is what I want to do with my life, be a professional performer? I think in middle school, I always, in middle school, doing the musicals and being in chorus and singing and taking voice lessons, I I knew I loved it, and I knew it was some. It was something I excelled in and that I loved, but I think it was really high school when I just, when I kind of knew it was something I wanted to pursue past high school. Um, And that was because of the music and theater departments at my high school. So I just, that really made me want to pursue it professionally being a part of those shows and being in theater class and all of the different choirs and um, the regional and state choirs and all of that. I just knew it was something I wanted to do professionally. And a lot of kids at that time, uh, me included when I was at the same stage, I know a lot of times parents and counselors and all the people that are trying to, with the best of intentions, give us good advice. Uh, There's trepidations about going into the performing arts. Um, yeah. Did you happen to run into any of that? Um, I, I felt very supported by my teachers and my and um, counselors and everyone within the school. And my parents were always so supportive. My there was actually one moment when I myself wasn't so sure. <laughs> um, my senior, my no, I guess. My junior year, well, whenever you're applying to colleges, I suppose, the end of my junior year, and um, my dad, I had applied to a couple schools early decision, and I didn't get in, and they were schools I kind of wanted to go to, and I didn't get in, and I kind of was discouraged and taking it personally, and 
feeling like I wasn't sure it was what I wanted to do and or wasn't sure I was going to succeed. I was really, really unsure I was going to be able to succeed at this. And I remember very vividly um, getting emotional and my dad called me over to sit with him in the kitchen and he just said, I know, Rachel, that if you want to have success in this business, you will and that you 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 have what it takes and um i just i remember that moment very vividly uh yeah but yeah my but they were very supportive now do you find i find me personally and a lot of my friends that my teaching impacts my performing and my performance impacts my teaching and i think it's a great um it's a great marriage of uh professions because i think they both help each other do you find that one hundred percent. I've I I am so inspired by my students and I learn from them. It's I know I mean that sounds so cliche, but it's so it's such a real thing. You don't realize it when you hear that, but you know, even in the musical The King and I, they say by your you know, by your pupils you are taught and that is so true. And I feel I feel that um I learned so much from them and my my performing also impacts them. I mean, my my students um, they come to see me perform. They they get excited about things that I'm doing, and I have a lot to share with them, and they have a lot to share with me. So yeah, it's it's really wonderful. They do impact each other quite nicely. <laughs> I couldn't be more grateful for that that part of my life, and. Um, such a wonderful, lucrative job. I'm not, you know, I've, you know, so many friends, you know, everybody, everybody goes around asking each other, well, what's your survival job? What's your survival job? (laughs) You know, that's Mm -hmm. what they call it. And it's, and this is, you know, this is my survival job. And I don't even, I can't even call it that because I really love it. It's not, I'm not, you know, I, I truly enjoy it more than I ever thought I would even at that age. So, um, at a younger age. So I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm really grateful for it. So you talked about some of the struggles you had. You were unsure if you were going to pursue this professionally. Was there a moment after you got through college, got through your master's degree, and you're on stage or you're in some setting, and you're like, I've made it. This is the right decision. Like, there's no, no turning back now. No? Never. Never. Because, no, I <laughs> – not like a moment of oh my goodness I've made it. I mean I it's so funny I that I don't know I don't even I don't even know what that is. I just I I feel that's so a lot of people have asked me that and I I just I'm really grateful for all of the experiences I've had after college and I mean I've certainly had moments on stage where I've felt like, wow, I'm re- I'm doing this. I'm really doing this. And I guess maybe that's the I've made it type of feeling, mm-hmm. but it's never it's never quite it's never quite there of of like, wow, I've made it because I don't know what it is. You know what I mean? But I mm-hmm. I I do remember um I do remember a when I was touring with West Side Story internationally. It's, I ha- did have a lot of quite a lot of friends and family fly out to Europe to come see me, which was incredible. But I remember there was a performance where I didn't have any, one of the first performances I had of West Side Story where I didn't have anybody in the audience. And I was in Germany and I remember feeling like, wow, this is my job. Like, this is what I'm doing for a living. And this is, the best you know like this is this is what i've always wanted i did have that that kind of moment um but yeah yeah perfect now i understand what you mean because you know you'll practice and your friends and family are there and they'll clap no matter what Um, right right but but having the applause and the adulation of strangers it's a whole different thing you're like oh somebody actually does like it they're not being polite Right. (laughs) right yeah right it's a very different thing when you don't have a single soul in the audience versus, you know, you have, you know, five people out there cheering you on. It's a, it's a very different thing. It does impact the whole evening, actually, I think. Oh, yeah. 
tell me about when you found out that you got the role in Phantom. Could you just give us a synopsis, like, from start to finish? Like, you auditioned, whether how many callbacks? Like, what happened when you finally got the role? So I, um, I actually... I had I had gone to just about every open call you could for Phantom when I first moved here. Uh, so I moved, lived in New York for five years now, and I I had gone to a bunch of you know what they call cattle calls where there's hundreds of people um, to audition, and I didn't have an agent. And last year I signed with an agent uh, in May, and I the very first audition appointment he got me was for Phantom and they were looking for a replacement for the the alternate position the Christine that performs twice a week and I went in for my initial audition for them and then I had a call back a couple weeks later um it was about two or three weeks later I had a call back and then the day of my call back I remember my agent calling me in the afternoon and he said, they want you to come back in tomorrow. And I was like, oh, wow, that's really soon. And he said, yeah. Um, and, you know, the entire creative team is going to be there. And there's, I remember him telling me that there was going to be a Raoul, a, a, one, of, one of the men who plays the character Raoul in the Broadway production was going to be in my callback to read scenes with me. And I was like, oh, my God. Um, so I went in for the final callback and I walked into this very large room and there were vi video cameras videotaping me for, to show to the higher, higher ups, <laughs> producers. And, um, I was in the room for over an hour, which was very intense. I had to sing songs from the show multiple times with notes given to me in between of how to rework them and what to put into them the next time. And I had to read a scene about seven times. It was very long and very intense. And I remember leaving that call back and just crying. <laughs> and I just, I remember I, I called my husband and I said, I need to meet up with you for a second on the street. And I, I walked to his office and cried. And I said, that was, you know, an unbelievable experience. I'm obvious. It's obviously, you know, down to the, I, it was a final callback, what they would call, what they would say, and um, and that, and then the waiting game began, which was painful, <laughs> as it always is. Um, and there was, I I knew it was between me and two other girls. My agent could find that out from the casting office, and then, um, I I had kind of there was one date that I I my agents thought we were going to find out by and I didn't hear anything. And, uh, but I was still kind of waiting by my phone and I was actually at my parents' house in Delaware, which is just so perfect. So I was <laughs> in Delaware and, uh, I was, I was at my mom teaches Zumba and I was at her Zumba class and I brought my cell phone with me, which I would never do, but I brought it with me just in case I got a phone call and my agent, I, I looked down and my agent was calling and I just didn't answer it. I just kind of freaked out and didn't answer it. And I, I didn't even tell anybody that he called. And then I, we got back to the house and I had a voicemail from him and it was just like, Hey, give me a call when you get a chance. I, you know, want to talk I, and I just kind of felt like this was going to be the phone call of you know you didn't get it and you know it's all good you know on to the next like the usual and I answered the I called him from my closet I literally sat in my closet <laughs> at, at my house in Delaware and I and I called him and I said he said hey how would you feel if I told you you're going to be making your Broadway debut this September and I just I mean, that, from that point on, was kind of a blur. I just kind yeah. of ran downstairs screaming and crying, was on the floor. Like, it was it was wild and very exciting. <laughs> that's a long-winded answer, yeah. No, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> it's outstanding. And I know the answer, but I have to ask you so you can give me your answer. Do you still listen to music for pleasure? Yes. <laughs> oh, my gosh, yes probably like 20 hours out of the day. <laughs> no, I mean, yes, very much so. 
Um, anything in particular or all things, or do you gravitate towards anything? All things lately. I've uh, All things. I really, I, it depends on the day. It depends on my mood, but um, I listen to a lot of jazz. I listen to a lot of, um, I, I even listen to a lot of pop music lately, which is kind of odd for me. I never was into current <laughs> pop music ever my friends used to actually make fun of me in middle school and high school and even college for not knowing like the current songs um but i i am into some more current pop music actually and just even i mean i've i really listened to everything opera musical theater classical um yeah but a lot of jazz old standards i just i love so yeah i listen to everything i guess I don't really listen to country, but I listen to just about everything else. <laughs> nice. And I've seen on social media you've been involved in some things. I don't know exactly what it is, but maybe it's mentoring kids that are interested in getting into Broadway. Could you share some of that with us? Yes. Yeah, so um, one of my one of my close friends now, um, I actually didn't know her before, but she has started an organization called Fit for Broadway. And it's really amazing. And she reached out to me when I was in Phantom to do an interview. And um, she started this blog for, it's it's really for, you know, uh, even kids in high school, but also kids in college and kids right out of college um, to see what the lifestyle of Broadway performers in New York and actors in New York and it's so brilliant because it's, there's, there are so many features to it that, you know, you don't know, you, you move here, you know, they don't even t- talk about these things in college programs, which I think is really unfortunate. Um, but they don't, they don't always focus on the business and what, what it's going to be like when you come here and where do you, where do you even find out about auditions? Where do you go? What do you do? How do you stay in shape? How do you, you know, all of these things. And so she started this um, blog, and now she has started doing these workshops, these full-day workshops um, for kids that are interested in pursuing this. And even, I mean, even young adults that are interested in pursuing this and want feedback or want to speak with uh, people doing it. And so I've uh, participated in the last couple workshops with her. And it's really wonderful. So I, I I just love it. It's it's a really important thing, and it's it's kind of missing. And she's smart to have started it because it's just something that people need and crave when they come when they move to New York and they don't they don't they don't know where to go or what to do. And it's just a wonderful forum for that. So happy to be a part of that. So you said it's a blog, so there's a website. So uh, I'll get that info from you, and I'll put the link directly under this podcast so folks can go check that out and uh, find out how they can get involved. Amazing. So it's fitforbroadway.com. And, yeah, that would be amazing. Yeah. Awesome. And we can find out about your latest activities if we hit your website, right? Is it rachelzakoff.com? Yes. Perfect. I will put that under this podcast as well. Thank you for being an inspiration. I know a lot of the kids down here in suburban Philly, you're really a role model to them, my own daughter included, uh, Juliet. Come down and work with her, with uh, Judy Star Pizzola's great uh, Young Stars Theater. Thank you. Thank you for, for, for this interview. I, I'm so happy to do it, and um, lots of luck to all awesome. of your students, too. <laughs> okay, thanks, Rachel. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks, John. Bye-bye. For more about Rachel Zakoff and her upcoming projects, please visit her website at the bottom of this podcast and her social media links. Thanks for listening.